we are inching closer and closer into proofs. Everybody's favorite, right? Proofs. Uh, yesterday we talked about reasoning. Now let's get into logic. All these things deal with having to prove things. Well, in logic, we have statements. Okay? Every statement is either true or false. Every single one. Uh, and then we have things that are called truth values. It's basically the value of the sentence. It's just saying if it's true or false. Right? That's our truth value. So, for example, I call this statement down here statement P. That's where this P comes from. So, statement P states a rectangle is a quadrilateral. Well, quadrilaterals have four sides. Rectangles have four sides. So, a rectangle is a quadrilateral. So, in this case, this statement would be true. That's its truth value. Okay, for statement P. Well, we're going to use this stuff in just a little bit. There's also a few things we can do with our statements. The first one is a negation. It's the opposite meaning of the statement. So if the statement was true, then it becomes false. If it was false, then it becomes true. And we use a little squiggly, or in a tilde, I guess it's called. So, and how we refer to this is we say not. So not P, the negation of P, statement P, a rectangle is not a quadrilateral. So now it becomes false, because we stated before that P was true, so the negation of P, or not P, is false, right? A rectangle is not a quadrilateral, because it is a quadrilateral. So that's why this statement would be false, the negation of it. We also have compound statements, written with and or or. So it's two statements together, written with and or or. Well, if it's written with and, we call it a conjunction. And if it's written with or, it's called a disjunction. And there's a big difference between the two. So let's take a look at two statements here. I have statement P and statement Q. And that's what the book is going to use a lot, P and Q, and then R once it gets to the third statement. But statement P is a rectangle is a quadrilateral. Statement Q is a rectangle is convex. Well, if I take a look, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, which is true. And Q, a rectangle is convex. That is also true, isn't it? It doesn't cave in. So if I would put them together by saying P and Q, and the symbol we use for and is an upside down V, which kind of looks like a capital A. So I'm going to put that up there by my hand. Or would be the opposite way. So and kind of looks like a capital A. And or is the upside down version of it. So P and Q. A rectangle is a quadrilateral and a rectangle is convex. So these are both true, which makes this whole thing true. Then we're going to talk about what happens when one is false and the difference between an and and an or. And we'll see that here shortly. So let's go ahead and try, try an example. It says, use the following statements to write a compound statement for each conjunction. Then find its truth value. Explain your reasoning. Well, before you do anything, you got to decide which statements are true and which ones are false. So if I look at statement P, one foot is 14 inches. Well, that's false. We all know that one foot is 12 inches. Statement Q, September has 30 days. So you might have to think about it. Use your knuckles if you know the knuckle trick. Uh, but July and August have 31 days, which means September has 30. So that is true. It's a true statement. And R, a plane, is defined by three non-collinear points. Well, we learned last chapter that that is true. So P is false, Q is true, and R is true. So that's going to help us. So A, P and Q. The first thing says, write a compound statement. So I'm going to say one foot is 14 inches and September has 30 days. There's my compound statement. Now i got to decide its truth value. Its truth value. Well, I'm saying P is false and Q is true, correct? False and true. Well, if it's and, in order to be true, they both have to be true, don't they? So if it's false and true, that makes this whole thing false. So its truth value would be false because for and they both have to they both have to work. They both have to be true. Okay? They both have to work. 
If I look at B, it says the negation of P and R. Remember, this symbol means and. The up there, the, looks like a capital A. So negation of P, not P. So I'm going to say one foot is not, right, the negation of P, 14 inches. And, I'm using and again, and I'm using R. And a plane is defined by, I'm going to slap you right in here, three non-collinear planes. Okay, so let's figure out what these mean. The negation of P, so that's the opposite of P, isn't it? So if P is false, that means the negation is true. And if I think one foot is not 14 inches, that's true. And R, well, we just said R was true, so true and true makes this whole thing true. Makes the whole thing true. Well, now let's look at one with OR. Let's look at one with OR. So I'm saying P or Q. Remember that this symbol means OR. So I write them both out again. So I say one foot is 14 inches. And, and I'm saying or, right? Not and, but or this time. And, or September has 30 days. So let's take the difference of or. P we said is false. One foot is not 14 inches, so that's false. And Q is true. So if I'm saying P or, or is my keyword here, false or true, that makes the whole thing true, because I said or. The true overrides the false. So for or, as long as one thing's true, the whole thing is true, right? Because one foot is 14 inches, or September has 30 days. Well, September has 30 days, so that makes the whole thing true, because I said or. So there's the difference between and and or, and how we work that out. Truth tables, okay, this is one of my favorite things in geometry. It's a convenient method for organizing truth values of statements. So negation. So we always start with P, because P is kind of my general statement. And we're going to make a truth table. So what I'm going to do is, if I'm making the negation of P, well, if P, the negation of it would be not P, just like that. But what if I think P is either going to be true or it's going to be false? Can't be any other thing. It's got to be true or false. Well. The negation of P, if it's true, if it's true, that means the negation is false. And if it's false, the negation would be true. So you're just working down the row. So if P is true, the negation would be false. If P is false, the negation would be true. That would be just our general negation there. What about a conjunction? We said a conjunction was and, right? And that is this symbol right here. So before I can do an and, I need two statements. So I'm going to have statement P, and I'm going to have statement Q, and then I'm going to do the conjunction of the two, P and Q. And now let's make this into a table. Okay, well, P can be true or false, but if P is true, Q could be true, or Q could be false, right? There's two different cases. If P is true, Q could be true. If P is true, Q could also be false. Well, then P could also be false. Well, when P is false, Q could be true. And when P is false, Q could also be false. I got to take care of every single case that could occur with two statements. So for P and Q, I'm thinking and now. So true and true makes the whole thing true. True and false would make the whole thing false because they both have to be true in order for it to be true. False and true makes the whole thing false and false and false, the whole thing false. Okay, so the only case to make a P and Q true is for both of them to be true. And we talked about, we'll run through this quickly, how that's different for a disjunction. So I gotta have two statements, P, Q, so then I would have P or Q for a disjunction. So just like before, P could be true 
then Q could be true or false with that case. Same thing with false. Q could be true or false. That's how I start off every truth table. And P or Q. Well, true or true gives me true. True or false gives me true still, doesn't it? True or false, because as long as one thing is true, the whole thing is true. False or true, the whole thing is true. False or false, well, the whole thing's false if they're both false. So it's a little bit different with the conjunction and a disjunction, right? And both cases have to be true in order to be true, or, or just one of them. So that's construction truth tables. So here I look, I got a P and I got a Q. Well, a negation of P, but in general I have a P and a Q statement. I also know that I need a negation P, a not P, and then finally I can make this statement which we're looking for because I have I have my negation P and my Q. So I gotta set up my truth table to have both those in order to set this up. So negation P or Q. So I'll do that in Q. There we go. So now I make my truth table. Well, I have my two statements, so P could be true or false. But if P is true, Q could be true or it could be false. Same thing with the false. So my truth table start, usually starts off the same. Now I'm saying not P or the negation of P. So I gotta look at P. So not P in this case would be false because if P is true, then negation P is false. Looking at the next one, well, same thing, true. So the negation of it is false. Looking at the third one, false. So the negation is true, it's just the opposite. And the last one, true. So I compared these two columns, right? Because I'm looking at P and the negation of P. Well, now that I got that, I can do my disjunction, my or. So now I'm looking at what two columns? Not P and Q. So not P or Q, and that's my or here. So as long as one is true, the whole thing's true. So I just look at those two columns. So I look at my first two. True and false, that makes the whole thing true. False and false, false. True and true, true. False or true, true. Because I'm looking at or, so as long as one is true, the whole thing is true. So I'm just comparing these two columns, the Q and the not P. And we're saying or, so as long as one is true, the whole thing is true. So this would be my final answer. But I need to set up that whole table to do that. So true, false, true, true. Okay, looking at the last one here. P or negation Q and R. That's a big one, isn't it? So first of all, I'm going to need three statements, a P, a Q, and an R. I'm going to have to get this statement as well. I'm going to have to get a negation Q in there as well. I got a lot of things to do. So I'm going to start off, need statement P, need statement Q, I need statement R. Let's just start with that. It's a little trickier with three statements. Because if P is true, that means Q could be true and R could be true. Well, P could also be true and Q could be true and R could be false. So there's the situation with both P and Q being true. Well then if P is true, Q could also be false. Well then R could be true or false in that case as well. So there's a lot of cases here, aren't there? Looks like I'm gonna have four of them with P being true and four with P being false. Extend my red lines here. So now the same thing. Q could be true and R true. Q could be true and R false. Q could be false and R true. And Q could be false and R false. All false. That's a lot of cases. Getting three statement makes a little bit of work, doesn't it? Well, then what else do I need in my statement up here? I need a negation Q, right? I need a not Q. So I'll take care of that. I'm also going to need what's in the parentheses. A not Q and R. And then I'm going to need that whole thing for my final column, P or not Q and R. That's going right in there. Oh boy, it's going to be a lot. So let's start with not Q. So basically I'm just putting the opposite symbol as Q. So if I look at Q, I got true, so this is false, true, so this is false, false, so true, false, so true. Just putting the opposite symbol. All right, I was looking at the Q column. And you want to not Q, just put the opposite symbol. Now let's go ahead and do the negation Q and R. So remember and, so they both have to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. So I'm looking at the R and not Q column. 
So as long as one is false, the whole thing is false. So false, false, true, false, 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 true, false. Right? They both have to be true in order for it to be true with an and. And lastly, I'm looking at which two columns? The one in parentheses, the not Q and R, or P, looking at those two. So I just compare their truth values. And or, as long as one is true, the whole thing's true. So true or false, the whole thing is true. True or false, true, true and true, true. True or false, it's true. Right now I'm here, false or false makes the whole thing false. Another false or false. False or true, the whole thing is true. False or false, false. Okay, so you just gotta go column by column. Some of them take a little bit of work, especially when you get into three statements. But they're kind of fun to do. So in the end, I have what? Three falses and five trues in that last column. Lastly, we have Venn diagrams, which you've all seen before. Uh, so let's just try a couple examples here. Looking at, I got tap, jazz, and ballet. How many students are enrolled in all three classes? Well, which students take all three of them? Well, that's the one where all the circles are combined, and that's where that nine's at. If you notice, each circle is a part of that nine. So nine kids are in all three classes. Then it states how many students are enrolled in tap or ballet. So it could be in tap or ballet. The mistake we see here is most, a, a lot of kids will go all well, 28 and 29. Well, if I think about it, there's 17 more kids that take both tap and ballet. There's nine more kids that take tap, ballet, and jazz. So that means they're in tap or ballet, aren't they? Same with right here. 13 of them take tap and jazz. So that means all the numbers I circled, all those kids take either tap or ballet. So I have to add all those up. So I have to go 28 plus 29 plus 17 plus 9 plus 13, which gives us 90 six students, 96 students. And lastly, how many students are enrolled in jazz and ballet, but not tap? So jazz and ballet, which would be right here, but not tap, so I can't include the tap kids, which leaves us with 25. So I threw a lot at you here. Truth tables, Venn diagrams, um, just remember, and both have to be true in order for the whole thing to be true, or, or only one has to be true for the whole thing to be true. Those are your keys. That's your key for this whole thing for these truth tables.